What is going on everyone, I'm Adriano and this video is a walkthrough on how to deploy an AWS glue job using infrastructure as code with Terraform. In my latest video, I did a walkthrough on how to develop a glue job locally in VS Code and PyCharm. So now that we have our code, instead of manually creating our glue job in the console, let's take that script and deploy it to AWS glue with Terraform so we can get all the benefits of using infrastructure as code, such as being able to version control our glue job configuration, faster deployments, and manage different variables between AWS accounts to say a few. In this video, I'm going to be covering how to set up our Terraform project with the AWS provider, create our IAM role and policies we need for our glue job, create a glue resource and upload it to S3, and how we can handle different variables between AWS environments or sandbox or production environments. And then finally, we're going to use Terraform commands to deploy everything we need in one shot to AWS. Now, if you want to follow along, here are a couple of prerequisites, which include having Terraform already installed, having an existing AWS account, and configured an IAM role that has sufficient permissions that you can use locally to deploy these resources we will be creating to AWS. All right, let's get started. All right, so I'm using PyCharm to manage my Terraform project, and what we're going to be doing is deploying this glue script to AWS glue. Now, at a high level, it seems very simple, but there's other services that we're going to need under the hood to make this happen. We need an IAM role. We need to configure our glue job parameters, such as how many nodes we want to use. So all of this we can manage through Terraform. So as you can see here, this is a very simple script. All that it's doing is reading from this S3 bucket that is managed by AWS called AWS glue dash datasets. And all we're doing is reading this into a dynamic frame and then converting it into a pandas data frame. That's it. No transformations at all. So how do we get this to AWS? What do we need to do now? So you can see in my project here on the left hand side of my screen, all of my code for this projects in this deploy glue job folder. So I have my glue job within this folder here, which I have on my screen and all the Terraform code that we're going to need is in this Terraform folder here. So let's start with the providers file. And this is also, some people might call this the main.tf file. So on line two, the first thing we're going to be doing is just checking to make sure we're using a more recent version of Terraform. So I've just set it to be greater than 1.65. And the second part, which is the required providers. So, so this is specifying the version of the AWS provider that we need. Set it to greater than or equal to 5.3. And the reason I specified this version or above is there's new parameters they've added to glue jobs, such as being able to run flex executions. So you can basically save money by using extra compute. If you're not sure, and if you're brand new to Terraform, you have no idea what a provider is. Well, Terraform relies on plugins called providers to interact with cloud providers, such as SaaS providers and other APIs. So the one that is used for AWS is HashiCorp dash AWS. This is the official one to manage your AWS services. So below that on line 12 here, as you can see, I've specified the region that we're going to be deploying to. So I'm using the CA central one and the profile that you want to use. So this is going to use the credential file that you have on your machine. So you're going to want to change this region to the region you're trying to deploy to. All right, great. So on line 17, this is where I've set the configuration for my Terraform tf.state file. So this keeps track of all the different changes that have happened. So if I so if I deploy, let's say a glue job, make a parameter change, it's going to keep track of that. And you can leave this blank to keep it in your local machine. However, I wanted to store this on AWS in the event another team member wants to make a change to this file as well. So as you can see, I've set up the back end, made it to be equal to S3, and then I pass in the bucket, the key, the region, and which profile we're going to be using. So when we, when we initiate Terraform, we're going to be passing in this specific file here. Great. Now let's talk about the next thing that we need, which is going to be the IAM policies and roles in order to deploy a glue job. So I'm going to go to the IAM.tf file and I've just incorporated all the policies and roles in this file here. So the first policy that I've created, I've called it the assume role policy. This is the policy I need so that my glue service can use a particular role I'm going to create. As you can see here, I'm assigning the action of assume role. All right. The next resource that I've created in Terraform is my data lake policy. So this allows me to read and write to a specific S3 bucket. 
And as you can see here, I made this a variable and you can assign this to whatever bucket you want. So in the event, you're just going to be interacting specifically with S3 buckets that you're maybe building a lake house architecture or a data lake. You want to make sure that your glue service role has access to this bucket. So you can see we've given it the put object, get object and delete object request. I've also given it the ability to list bucket, which we also need. However, I've added it specifically for the bucket where my data is being stored as well. Right. And the last statement is allowing me to do get object on that public bucket so that we can pull some of that sample data out for my glue job. Great. So next we need to basically create that policy out of that document. So all we're doing is using the IAM policy, passing in the policy as a JSON here and uh, my tag for this particular project. Great. So now that we've covered the policy that we need, the last component we need is setting up our IAM role. So I've created a new resource called glue service role. And here, what we're going to be doing is passing that policy that I showed you earlier, which is allowing the glue service to use this particular role. And now finally, we're attaching our data lake policy that we created above to this IAM role. Now I'm going to have all this code on my GitHub repo. If you want to take a look at a later time, you might find this code is really helpful to get you up and running with deploying glue jobs. All right, so now let's move over to the Blue Terraform script. So here we've basically created two resources that you're, we're going to need in order to deploy our script to the AWS Glue service. So the first resource which I've created is AWS S3 object. Now you might be thinking, okay, why, why do we need this? We, we should just be needing to create our Glue role. Well, the Python file that I've created that has my PySpark code needs to be uploaded to S3 in order for my Glue job to reference it. So this is where we're referencing the bucket and the key for this script. So what it's gonna be doing is taking this file called the test deploy script. So see how we're using this local source and the Glue source path. And what this is basically referencing this file here in this location and we're passing in that name of the files so it's going to grab this file and dump it to this key in s3 all right so you might be wondering what is this e tag value that i've had here now this is really important and i didn't know about this earlier and if i knew about it it would have saved me a lot of time um, what this is doing is it's doing a, a checksum function. So anytime we do a new deployment, it's going to check the file that I have locally compared to what's in S3. And if it notices a difference because of the unique hash value, it's then going to do a new deployment. So if you do not include this line, you might deploy your glue job locally fine the first time, but anytime you make a change, it's going to have no idea. It's going to know that the file already exists and it's not going to do anything. So by adding this, it's going to do a deployment only when the file notices it's different. So if you're continuing to develop and deploying, this is going to be really, really helpful. All right, so let's talk about some of the parameters we need for our, our glue job in order to deploy it. So the first variable here is the glue version. Now, as of making this video, Glue 4.0 is the last one, and I've just highlighted that is optional. You do not set this variable. What's going to happen is it's going to use the latest. So if you wanted to specify um, Glue 3.0, you would set this to be 3.0. But in this case, I'm going to leave it to 4.0. Okay, so max retries. This is also an optional parameter. Um, I think the default, correct me if I'm wrong, it might be three, but if you wanted to not retry every time, that might cost you a little bit of money. If you know there's an error in it, you can set it to zero. If it just runs and fails, it's not going to try to rerun again. And first required parameter is going to be the name of the script. So this is what we're going to see in the AWS service. So I've just called it test deploy script. And later we're gonna, at the end of this video, we'll go to the console and make sure we can see this file here. Next is going to be the description. This is optional as well, but it's always helpful to explain what your glue job is going to do. So all I've written is this is just to test the deployment of an AWS glue job to the AWS service with Terraform. All right, the next is going to be the rule ARN. So this is going to be the glue service role that's going to be having permissions to run our job. So this role needs to have permissions to where the data is and be able to assume the role for the AWS Glue service. So what we can see here, it's actually referencing the role that I created in my Glue file. So it recognizes that this is a valid role. Now, the next parameter is the number of workers. So the default is five. 
And for a lot of people, maybe your data isn't going to be billions of records. So if you're dealing with smaller data sets, I highly recommend using the minimum amount of workers. This will save you a lot in compute costs. So in my case, I am just doing a very simple test job. So I've set it to two. Next is going to be the worker type. So we can use this is going to be specif specifying which type of machine we want to be using to run our glue job. And the most inexpensive one is going to be the default G.1x. We can go to 2x and then 4x and then even 8x. Um, just keep in mind as you move up in number, the more expensive they become, but the machines are much more powerful. So this is important to understand your data before choosing it. And timeout is going to be the number of minutes before your job times out. So I've set it to 60, which means 60 minutes. Next, we have the execution class. And what the execution class takes care of is if we want to be able to use the standard or flex option, if you set it to flex, which I have here, we're going to basically be using leftover compute, which is going to be more inexpensive for us to run in our AWS account. But the downside is you, this is not good to rely on in production because sometimes there might not be extra compute lying around that are left idle. So your job might not run if you have set it to flex but in the case of just testing your jobs and just want to save some money this is a newer option i think that was introduced within the last year great moving on tags is just the tags you want for your glue job it is just optional so in the command setting here this is where the name is going to be the type of job that we want to use so i'm using glue etl which is the standard if you wanted to create a glue streaming job then it would be glue streaming for the name Right. And next is going to be the script location. So this is where the glue script is going to be in S3. Right. And if we move down here, there's just some optional logging parameters that we've specified here. Um, the job language, so I think Scala or Python are the two options. Here I've just turned off the bookmarking feature. Great. And the last two parameters that I've added, these are not required at all. And most likely you will not need these, but if you wanted to deal with iceberg cables, these are some parameters you need to add into to your glue job in order for iceberg table formats to work. All right. So I've just covered all the resources that we're going to need. So we've covered the glue and IAM rows. Last thing I just want to show you here is our variables file so the tfrs so this is just going to be variables that we're going to be specific to our aws environment so here are my two variables that i've added so my s3 bucket i wanted that to be dynamic and the name of the project and then these variables need to be in the variables.tf file which is going to provide some more information about them so if you want needed to put a default value we can put it here and here i've just added the local variable so I can reference my glue path or my glue script I have in my directory. All right, so we got all our code. I've walked you through what we need. Now let's go ahead and deploy our code. So in my readme file, I've added the commands that we're going to need. So if you wanted to follow along with me of deploying your code, you're going to need to change your S3 bucket and maybe add your own project name to it. And once you do that, we can go ahead and, and follow along. So the first step here, is to initiate our Terraform project. So make sure I'm in the root of the deploy underscore glue job folder. And if I just run my Terraform init here, I'm changing directory to the Terraform directory. So the directory below this one, and we're going to run that. So assuming you have Terraform installed, and if you don't have any of the dependencies for this already on your project, then it's going to go ahead and install that. So we've initiated successfully. That's great. Now, next we can go ahead and run the Terraform plan. So here we're passing the var file, so the prod file. Now, in the event you were going to be deploying to, um, a, this, let's say, sandbox a, account, and you want to use a different variable file, you can set that there. Now let's just go ahead and use our prod.tf vars file for those variables. All right. So what has happened? We haven't deployed it yet, but now it's given us the plan before we deploy. And what we can see here, there's going to be five new resources added to our AWS account once we do that. So we can always check to make sure we confirm, make sure it looks good. So we have our IAM rule as well as our glue job. Great. And finally, we can now go ahead and run our deployment. 
using the apply function. So let's just go ahead and run our Terraform apply. And we're going to say yes to make that deployment happen. So let's just go ahead, give that a run. And great. So we've successfully deployed all five resources to my AWS account. And now if we open up the AWS Glue service in our browser, uh, if we just refresh our glue jobs here, we can just now see that our job is now appearing. Great. So let's just click on that. And it is the same code we had locally, which is great. We know that worked. And all of the parameters that we've set have been set as well. So there you go. We've successfully used AWS Glue to deploy our Glue job to the AWS Glue service, as well as the supporting IAM role and policies that are needed. Before we end this video, I want to give a special shout out to this video sponsor, Hivelocity. Hivelocity has been around for over 21 years and their product is a virtual private cloud hosting solution designed to offer customers greater flexibility, scalability, and leading price to performance when hosting their applications and websites. Whether you're running applications or websites, their VPS solution equips you with the tools to achieve optimal performance and reliability. Their website makes it incredibly easy to get started. With a few clicks, I can select the server I want based on my needs and then select the operating system and then proceed to checkout. If you use my link in the description below with the coupon code dataeng one High Velocity will give you one month of VPS absolutely free. So I hope you found this video helpful and you now know how to deploy glue jobs with Terraform in AWS. I'll include a link in the description below for this code in case you want to reference it in the future. Thanks so much for watching, and if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing for more videos on working with data in AWS. Thanks again, and see you next time.